Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Today we have a huge success for Ukrainian army and you may spot it even from this scale. Just look at this yellow plum here near to the Kharkiv. Let's zoom in to that particular place and it's been confirmed that the Ukrainian army took Balaklia city today. It's quite a big one in this uh, territory and today at 16.00 local time 4 p.m. our forces put flag on the main building in that city. And let's zoom out a little bit my friends just want to show you how many kilometers we took under our control 21 kilometers and how many kilometers are we fighting for our land so near to Shevchenko it's almost 40 kilometers and we have some of the information that Ukrainian forces moved up to 50 kilometers so somewhere near to Starovivka I think over there so obviously we have this huge vector of Ukrainian attack from the south but also we are pushing from this side as well and we took already two of the supply lines for Russia we cut them this road over here and this road Road near to Balaklia city and let's move a little bit to the southeast territory so the Izum is here the main Russian hub and before I thought that we're gonna move from Balaklia towards Vesela Vesela is here if we take this crossroad over here we would cut Russian supplies from this flank but we were able to get to the north and now with two of the roads cut Russia simply has no supplies from this part to Izum. Izum direction may only be supplied through this line and here we have the bridge that will be for sure destroyed by the Heimer's rocket artillery system. Speaking about Izum my friends this is the biggest Russian base in the region they have around 20,000 soldiers in this place all around and the only way for them not being circled by Ukrainian army is to go through this bridge across the Oscar water reservoir otherwise with those supplies lost here and there they'll just struggle the only road that they may use for supplies is this one but it's very close to the front line on the south and we may use any kind of artillery systems just to destroy russian supplies so i'd say that they are almost lit circled and now i just want to check if we can destroy that bridge so let's measure 75 kilometers from this place we can put hymers here in the bushes and fire directly destroying that breach my friends nice tactics from ukrainian forces and the autumn is coming winter is coming that is why the roads are very important for the supply lines tracks cannot go across the fields during the winter time that is why they need to keep roads under their control so the winter campaign should be very interesting for ukrainian army for russians as well uh, let's move northbound a little bit my friends uh, we also have the information about kupens kupens is very important my friends it's the major city in this area and it has important crossroad and i think ukrainian army is fighting for that is going to fight for that city as well and how many kilometers 30 kilometers to cover and just to remind you my friends we covered the 50 kilometers in just two days if that intensity continues we're going to be in kupensk also in two days however russia may throw their uh, reinforcements to the area from the north because Kupensk is much more closer to Russian border obviously than Balaklia so we expect hard fighting for this territory what is important about Kupensk my friends that Russia had a command center of Kharkiv region in that particular city and from the information I know they've been evacuated to Wolfchan so very close to Russian border. I would say that this counterattack from Ukrainian side was unexpected by Russia and it was unexpected by Ukrainians I think it was abrupt and two days we got this advantage my friends and they are basically running I mean Russians are running unfortunately we cannot uh, counterattack from this side because here we have the water storage so it could be the only place for us to go to Kupensk and to this part and probably once we're going to reach the Ukrainian Russian border here in this place because they may use this road to throw reinforcements to the area so we need to cut 
them here as well and we have a big railroad the white one is a railroad that also goes to Kupensk and basically Russia use the railway transport much more compared to road transport like tracks I zoomed out a little bit just to show you the strategic and tactical goals possible goals of Ukrainian army in this region so first of all here is a zoom is to circle this group of Russian soldiers 20,000 soldiers it's quite interesting my friends they are already in circled in Kherson area and cut from the supply lines so if we encircle this area as well we're gonna get rid of almost half of the Russian army in Ukraine second possible goal is to cause Russians to send their forces in this region because Russians were planning for the attack on the eastern side of Ukraine it was for sure we knew about that information and they put more reinforcements to Ukraine now they have 15,000 soldiers on the north part of Ukraine and they may send them to the eastern part of the front lines as well. So they were planning for one more attack. Most of those soldiers are volunteers. Why the eastern part of the front line is so important for Russia? Because they have political goal to take the Donetsk area. It was announced by Putin and they were planning to use those 15,000 soldiers in that region. And now they will throw them probably in the Kharkiv area to compensate Ukrainian successful counterattack and basically that is how we cancel Russian possible attack on the eastern part of Ukraine and the third possible reason my friends is just to try the massive counterattack with the western made weapons so we tried it in the biggest spot of Russia and as you can see it's very successful so we may expect many more counterattacks in the future that could be as successful as this one my friends I'm very impressed and now let's go to the timeline so 6th of the September two days ago and let's go every hour we were taking some part of the land oh my god it's so fast my friends just look at it uh, the 7th of September now it's 8th uh, the day I'm recording this video it's crazy it's uh, this morning oh my god it's so uh, no this afternoon and it's now this evening my friends almost 8 p.m according to local time it's crazy so yes you may compare this advancement with the russian attack on ukraine in february and march then they were getting lots of ukrainian ground with sometimes minor resistance from ukrainian side and that is how they occupied the area near to kiev and now they are running away the fact that we are speaking about successful and major ukrainian counterattack after six months of war actually my friends it's the big win for ukraine just remember first few weeks of war then we were thinking whether russia can take kiev and many other cities like kharkiv are they gonna capture half of ukraine or more now ukraine is getting its land back with fantastic speed and it's the turning point my friends i can state it it's the turning point in this war and here we have the true face of the russian military they have no coordination and do you know the name of the battalion they put in balaclia to protect the city it's sober the sober is internal police special forces like SWAT in the united states and basically it's not their job they use for specific tasks internal tasks they have no experience fighting on the front lines as soldiers do. That is how they were just demolished in that city. And that is how it works for Russia. It's nonsense military campaign conducted by Russia. They lost their premium forces here for nothing. Very interesting situation. I'm going to keep you updated on that one. And my prediction that we're going to go to Kupensk very, very soon about the other parts of the front line here we also have counter-attack of ukrainian forces however today according to this map we don't have any kind of the movement however the counter-attack in the south is ongoing successfully and simply they have some sort of delay presenting the information just to keep the information classified for some time but obviously my friends i'm gonna keep you updated on every part of ukraine and today it's awesome day 
for Ukrainian army and Ukrainian people. Because of the length of this video, I'll give you a news update tomorrow. However, we have bad news for today. It's not about Ukraine, it's about United Kingdom. While I was recording this video, I got the message that Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II died. Yes, those are tragic news. My condolences uh, to British people and not only because Queen Elizabeth was the Queen for of Canada and many other ex-British colonies. Uh, so it's a huge loss, but what can I say? It's our life, you know, it's not infinite. She lived quite a great life. She was ruling 70 years. I think it's the longest time ever been recorded in human history. She've done so much to United Kingdom and not only. She was 96 years old. Well, I wish I would live that long <laughs> and have a common sense at that time. And yeah, what can I say? Life is life, my friends. And I'll keep you updated on situation here in Ukraine. Don't forget to press the like to this video. If you want to support this channel, there are some of the links in the video description below. You may support me on PayPal, Patreon or Donatella, whichever you like. Those of you who support me, my friends, thank you so much for it. And I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are. Have a great time.